double monitors over here simultaneous. All right, OptiStruct, HyperMesh, I'll show it start up. Uh, file, import, geometry, God, formula SAE, sprocket test files. Oh, that's all the files from previous. Oh, man. Where's the step file? All right, step, open, import. There's our box. So this is just a test box just to figure out how to do this thing. All right. Um, we'll go to mesh. We'll create a mesh first. What did we do? We did volume mesh, tetra mesh. Yeah. Oh, she's where my no. Was it volume tetra? Or tetra? tetra. Oh, it was tetra. Oh yeah, and then volume tetra. Okay. So solids. You can just go displayed. Selects it. There's no existing mesh, so that doesn't really matter. Let's use curvature proximity. Not that that's going to do anything since there is no curvature on this. We'll just go like 0.5. We'll make it a little smaller than last time. 0.8. Okay, there's mesh. There's our mesh. Pretty coarse. Ooh, we got two in between. All right, return. Now what? Uh, I guess we can do materials. Material. All right, let's go up here. Materials. Create material one. We'll call it aluminum. Alum. Um, this. So modulus of elasticity. Just, just leave it for I'll now. I'll just leave it for now. That. No. Enter. And then Poisson's ratio. Point three. It's already selected. Mat one. Right. Yeah. And then properties. Properties. Create properties. Alum property, we want P solid, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, material, we'll assign the aluminum material to this property. That's it, isn't it? Current image, P solid, yep. All right, so we got our property in there. Um, we can go up to here to our component, assign the property to our imported component, which is the block that assigns the material already. So it's already okay. selected. That's our mesh. Okay. So now we can go create a load, right? Boundary condition, load. We'll just create force here. So nodes, we'll select a couple nodes to create our force at. Let's go one, two, three, four. And then now we'll select the plane that we want them to be normal to. So this will create a plane sort of end of the part like that. Magnitude, we'll make it like 5,000. We'll make it 10,000. We'll make it 15,000. So that should be 15,000. Depends if it's, if we entered in modulus of elasticity and megapascals, that's gonna be in Newtons. If we entered it in gigapascals, that's gonna be in um, kilonewtons. So this should, yeah, I'm not really sure what unit that's gonna be in, but um, I just recreated this. Okay, so now it's going towards the part like I wanted it to from the outside surface. All right, that's our force. Return, so we got that, and we'll rename that as our force. And we'll do another load collector. So this will be constraint. That's current part now. And we can go to, what is it, analysis? Yeah. Constraints, so now we're gonna create our constraints. We'll just create them on the bottom surface. So instead of nodes, we'll do by on plane. We'll select the, the plane that we want it to be on. Easy enough. And then we'll select the point B, which I'm not really sure what that means, but maybe it's the 
point we want them to be on or something. I'm not really sure what that is. Select entities, so now it's selected. Yep, all the nodes. Our mesh is kind of screwy because it breaks up right there. So it's like two wide, one wide. All right, create. Bam, there's our grounds. So constraints, SPC. All right, card image for both the force is, oops. Oh no, okay, it's, it's fine. So force card image is load as well as constraint card image. They're both a type of load, so they're both loads. For card image, is that it? Is there, nope. Of course, gotta create the load step. All right, analysis type for our load step that we want. We'll do linear static, so this will specify to the program what exactly is going on here. We have a load, and so we'll say that SPC, single point constraint, is a constraint. The load is our force, so now the program knows what it's working with. Analysis type, we want linear static. What? Statics? Is that right? Linear static. Wow. Oh, you're in different. Um... Oh, okay. Analysis type. All right. So oh, that's subcase options, subcase definition. Huh. Oh. All right. Maybe I just ignore that then. Do you know what that guy is? Yeah, uncheck. Just uh... uncheck it. Analysis. We just need to output. We need an analysis though. Oh, and static, it'll be a static, static type, still. I guess. That makes sense. Yeah. So the analysis type is linear static still. So for our outputs, we want to know. Oh, wait, we'll go up here. Displacement, C stress. I think that's element stress. There's no safety factor in there, are there? Uh, I don't know. I wonder if that is already output. Like, I wonder if we can select that once we're done uh, analyzing it. Yeah. I'm not sure. Safety factor, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess that's a good thing to go off of. But you can just go off of the, like, maximum, like, tensile or bending load or mm -hmm. whatever. Just go off the properties and then compute it math or just see which exceed you the maximum tensile stress. Yeah. Or yeah, probably probably yield is probably failure. If this thing yields, it's probably failure. So you can just compare whatever right. stress there is to the yield. I think yeah. that's it. Yeah. Alright, yep, load step one. Constraint for a single point. Yep. Alright. Go to analysis, opt-destruct. We don't want to optimize this thing. We want to see an analysis being done on all the export stuff. We're going to export everything. All right, opt-destruct. Yeah, we'll see. Job completed. Oh, my God, error. This arrow? Whoa. Incorrect data in field, field three. three. That looks familiar. Field yeah, it does. <laughs> Aluminum, P solid, aluminum, card image, force, constraint, load step, load step one, linear static, constraint. Maybe I'll assign the mesh as well. Okay. That might help. So here's the component, and here's the actual mesh itself so we gotta assign both of them to the material and the properties now we can try it it says analysis completed all right, did the all trick. right. now we'll just view out our results a little what's less. that not, arrow no i just clicked view out yeah Usually I'll view results so it like pops it in another window, but I'll just go to Hyperview now. So number three was the. Uh, I guess mesh has to de define property too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Apply. Boom. So that's displacement.
No idea what new units these are in. Millimeters? Meters? Can't be meters. It's got probably millimeters. <sighs> Stress. It's going to be pretty boring for this, too. Whoa. Oh, that's, that's quite cool. That's due to the mesh, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now I expect it, though. Not at all. It's quite a bit. Simple averaging. Oh, okay. So if there's no averaging, mm. it just takes one mesh element and it's like, okay, here's what it got. Mm. So maybe the averaging, so simple averaging will like kind of make it a nice contour plot. Yeah. But okay, mm. got that to work. Yeah. So you think we should be able to do the same thing with the sprocket then? Yeah, hopefully. Just got to get the mesh right. That darn mesh. True. Can I rock it, that sprocket? Mm-hmm.